Welcome back everybody to your SignalR series. I have some very useful information for you guys in this video. We are going to be talking about logging. This is going to really help you when you're developing SignalR apps. But before we go into that, I've noticed a bug in our application and I think we should fix that before we move on. So I'm not sure how this happened. I might have just got lost in the code and forgot to update something. But I'll show you the problem. I'll run the application and it's going to say connected anytime someone joins this web app. But this click me was supposed to display the server time on the page. But when you click it, nothing's happening. If you look at the console log, you can see that it says my hub is not defined. So let's go back to the code and try to figure this out. By the way, you can click here and it'll display where that error is. So you can see we're referencing my hub, which is not a thing anymore. So let's go back to the code and you can see that this variable here used to be named my hub. And that would probably fix things. But what I'm going to do is keep that at chat because we already have it referenced as chat in multiple different places. So we just forgot to update this here to chat. And let's save that and let's give it a run and see what happens. Refresh. And you can see it's working. Also something interesting to share with you guys. Notice how we're referencing the chat here, but it's not defined until here. I think the way that works is JavaScript kind of goes through your page and defines all the variables first. So I don't, I don't really think it matters on location, but just putting it at the top makes it kind of clear that, hey, we're going to reference this chat and now everywhere below it references it. Another thing, I'm going to take this event listener and just move that to the bottom because we don't really need that right now. So you can just hold alt and use your arrow keys to kind of drag that around. So I think that's where it needs to go. Let's save it, make sure there's no red squigglies or errors anywhere. And just to check, sure, check to make sure everything's working, let's go back to the page, do a refresh. Nothing's broken, so <laughs> at least nothing I know about. One other change that I'm going to do to the script file is I'm going to bring this down to a new line. That just makes it all fit and it's a lot more clean, so that'll make it easier to read. Now, on to logging, the actual purpose of this video. Logging is built in, so there's really not much we have to do, we just have to enable it. So all we have to do is we can do it um, after the connection is established. We can say $sign.connection.hub dot logging equals true. And what this is going to do is start a console log for signal R. So if we go back to our web app, refresh, check the, um, the console log, you can see we get these new signal R messages and it includes the time. So this is going to tell us every time we invoke a, a method and a whole bunch of other stuff. So this is really super cool. So in this situation, you can see we're invoking the hub announce to everybody method. If you go back to the, the code, you can see that is right here. We are also triggering the client hub event announce. So essentially, it's, it's logging that we hit this method and then we hit this function. And you can see how this could be really helpful when something's not working the right way, you can enable logging and it'll just tell you everything you need to know. But as I mentioned before, logging is kind of considered unprofessional in production. So you always want to try to remember to turn logging off. Then people can't go in here and learn everything about your code. You can actually put some of your own logs in this SignalR logger. And the way you do that is really simple. First, find a good spot where you want to do some logging. For example, right here, we could say connection.hub.log and then in parentheses, put whatever you want to log. So we'll save that, go back to the browser, do a refresh, and I guess I should inspect the elements here. All right, I forgot a uh, period here, so add that, save, refresh, and you can look in here, connected. So what's the benefit of that rather than just doing, you know, console.log? Well, there's a couple different things that makes this a better method. The first one would probably be that it makes things a little bit more organized because our console logs appear different. So let's go back to our browser, do a refresh, 
you can see hello here in black. You can clearly see the difference between our signal R messages and our console logging messages. Another benefit is that you could temporarily turn signal R messages off if you want to just see console logging. So the way you do that is just set this to false. But you can see we still have our signal R message here. It's just not going to be displayed. So save that, go back to the browser and refresh. And you can see none of those messages are emitted onto the screen and you can focus on just the console logs. So that's the very basics of logging. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to just try to clean this code up a little bit, push it to the repository, and then I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks guys, see you then.